For those of us who love driving, for the pleasure, for the interaction between man and machine, there's very little space for us left. Between congestion, yellow lines and speed bumps, we're taxed, charged and penalised to the very edge of existence. Today, having a smile upon your face in a car is simply seen as inefficient, and you'll probably be labelled a public menace too. So maybe we should give up, put down our car keys and pick up our bus passes. Well, thankfully, there is hope. This is the Subaru BRZ and it's a front-engined, rear-wheel drive, low-slung coupe and it's certainly something the fun sponges out there don't want you to have. But the BRZ has come to the party with exactly the right attitude. I don't care. You see, in this world of speed bumps and rising fuel costs, things like the BRZ are a bit of a rarity these days. This is the 2016 car, and yes, there's a 2017 car dropping imminently, and as soon as it hits UK shores, we'll bring you a full review of that car too. We've driven the BRZ before, back when it was brand spanking new, but we didn't put anything on video for it. So we thought, what better excuse to get one of the best handling sports cars on sale today back in our midst. As I'm sure you all know by now, this car is a shared platform with Toyota. It was a joint venture between Toyota and Subaru to come up with an exciting car that would reinvigorate both brands' model ranges. But there are some crucial differences between the Toyota and the Subaru. Visually, the Subaru gets different lights and a sportier body kit, including more aggressive front and rear bumpers. Something else to consider is that this very moment in time in the UK, the Subaru is cheaper than the Toyota sibling at £22,495 for this entry-level car. But the most crucial difference between these two is that Subaru has added its own chassis setup to the car and it changes the dynamics of it. The Toyota is a riot to drive and a bit of a drift monkey whenever you're in the mood. The Subaru is the same, it will still do the whole drifty slidey Ken Block stuff but it's a bit more focused in its application of performance on well, particularly British B roads. Find a spaghetti of tarmac and this car is primed and ready. It dives into the corner with the enthusiasm of a child towards a box of sweets and picks off apexes with laser point precision. There's less body roll than the Toyota, meaning that you have more control over the car's lateral motions. The steering's a bit heavier too, which is no bad thing, it just means you've got to be more deliberate with your actions and it's, it's better for placing the car exactly where you want it. Under the bonnet you'll find a 192 brake horsepower four-cylinder boxer engine and it sits nice and low for the perfect centre of gravity in this car. Now flat fours are something of a speciality for Subaru and so this engine is a gift to the Toyota Subaru collaboration. This car has 151 pounds feet of torque, but it's not found very low in the rev range, which means you have to rev it quite hard to get around. So, you know, it's not your ideal city car. But out here, on some forest roads, it is the mutt's nuts. Nord to 62 miles an hour takes 7.6 seconds, and its top speed is 140 miles per hour. Be willing to work the wonderfully mechanical six-speed manual transmission and you'll see just how enthusiastic this sports car can be. Push the car on and up into the rev range and that bassy soundtrack is... <laughs> it just wills you on to push the car a bit faster and do you know what? You've got the equipment to do it. The car is so well balanced, so willing to engage with you. It's very communicative, you can feel everything that's going on beneath you. It's just an utter pleasure to drive. It's that man and machine in tandem thing. It's the whole reason we love sports cars. And the strong brakes really inspire confidence. The trade-off in having that more focused suspension is that it's a bit firmer on day-to-day -day usage than what the GT86 has, for example. Um, but if you're buying into this car knowing that, knowing that you are going to have a ride that's a little bit bouncy whenever you're going over consecutive bumps, then it's not too much of an issue. And in my eyes, personally, I think that's a fair trade because it just gives you more lateral control of the car. And when you turn the pace back down and have the opportunity to survey your surroundings, you'll find yourself in a beautifully simplistic cockpit for a sports car. 
nice low slung seating position, body hugging bolsters, and of course you get a true mark of a sports car with the rev counter front and center because that is what matters whenever you're swapping cogs in this car. Sure, there are a few questionable plastics in here, but overall the fit and finish feels durable. Nothing feels like it's gonna fall apart. Those rear two seats, well, I suppose they're okay for occasional use for adults, but for children, they'll be just fine. And the car has a usable boot for the sort of machine that it is. Here's a fun fact for you. By design, if you fold the back seats totally flat, there's enough space back there for four full-size tires, meaning you can go to the track, slap those on, burn some rubber, and put your road tires back on to trundle home. This entry-level SE model also gets keyless entry and cruise control as standard. Subaru claimed that the BRZ will do 36 mpg combined and emit 181 grams per kilometre of CO2. You can have this very Subaru BRZ for £22,495 and it's worth every penny. So why not? Buy a BRZ! Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk.